Well, welcome back to another session of the uh, sixth grade painting project here. Uh, we're going to get started here in this unit on our uh, actual painting that we're going to create today. Uh, and uh, it should take us, and it usually does take us, about 11, perhaps 12 sessions maximum. Here's what you're going to need. Uh, you're going to need a 12 by 16 inch piece of poster board or cardboard or very, very heavy paper, I suppose, would be suitable for this as well. should be white if you can find it, uh, although you can use other colors as well. Just a piece of cardboard cut down to 12 by 16 inches would be fine. Uh, the problem is it cannot have a shiny surface on it. The paint will not stick to that. Uh, so you need to find a piece of uh, cardboard or poster board or a uh, some heavy paper or a piece of canvas if you got it even and it just can't be shiny. Uh, secondly, you're going to need some paint and the paint you'll need would be red, yellow, blue, black and white. It's funny because those are also the colors we use in our design project and so we're back to using the basic colors again. We can mix up every color we need with those three colors and black and white. So you'll need those. It doesn't really matter what kind of paint it is but I would recommend any sort of paint that you can clean up with soap and water. Uh, and then uh, lastly, of course, you'll need a paint brush. Uh, you're going to need some rinse water as well and uh, some paper towels. You'll need a place to work where you can let your painting dry as well. So uh, you'll need space as well. So for this particular session, we're simply going to be um, setting up our painting. So I'll remove that and we'll just be setting up a, a simple painting. So in this area you see outlined in black here, that is my uh, 12 inch tall by 16 inch wide uh, piece of art uh, board here. I'm using canvas. That's simply what I actually have available to me. But I would use a poster board in the physical classroom. Uh, now on this, this is a very involved following the directions operation. So uh, once I make a mark, you really need to do your very best to make that same mark and keep up with me if you can. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to estimate the very dead middle of this as best we can. It doesn't have to be absolutely perfect, but it does need to be pretty close. So I'm estimating that that's about right here. And I'm going to put a dot there, and I'm going to pronounce that dot so that you can see this on the projection screen. So it's right in the middle, or as close to the middle as I can estimate. Okay, now, we're going to divide this into four quadrants. There's going to be a quadrant here, 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 and here. And we need 40 shapes to make this project work at the minimum. Uh, sometimes we'll have up to 50. Other times we have to edit it back to about 24. Uh, <clears throat> but if we can get 40 shapes, then uh, we'll be doing just fine on this particular project. Now I'm going to uh, use a dark colored pencil here, I think to draw this out. I better just stick with a graphite pencil so I can erase it. Okay, so our quadrants are going to be split up into upper, upper right, lower left, and the lower right, and we're simply going to use unusual markings to uh, put our quadrants together so it's, you know, an art project. Uh, so here, I'm going to go along and I'm going to go line, and I have to draw darkly, <laughs> and then I'm going to put a kind of a square up and square down like this, right? Same thing again. I want it to be pretty much level if I can keep it that way. But it does not have to be perfect. It's just a preparatory sketch for a drawing, remember. It's not the actual piece of artwork itself. And then, let's see, we're going to go zig, zag below the line, zig back to the line, and then straight off the side like this. Now I'm simply just making this up as I go along. I'm trying to employ some of the things I know about design that we covered in the first unit. So in our design unit, uh, we made, you know, straight and curved lines and such. Now that I've made this, I'm going to go back and bold it with the marker so that it's visible to the students. Okay, but this marker, man, is awfully large, and it's kind of hard to see around. But I'm simply just going to, I would normally just keep, leave the pencil markings on. Okay, so that's what our first section should look like. Now we're going to uh, do um, 
it's similar in the other direction here. So if we go this way, and we put a, let's say, a lobe downward like a curve, almost like a puzzle piece, some people describe it to me. Alright, that looks pretty good too. And so if we do that for, you know, the sake of symmetry, right, we should have one that lobe that goes up, right? Okay, that's very good too. And then over here, we'll have a, uh, a step down and then a step back up again. You can make that all work out like that. So I'm going to go back and bold this with the marker so that we can see what we're doing here on the projection screen. So we're simply going to be doing a color wheel exercise where we mix colors together just like I was explaining in our lecture. <coughs> in the lecture, you know, we have primary, secondary, tertiary colors, you know, uh, and we're going to be making all of those colors. So it's an exercise more than it is an actual piece of artwork. Okay, let's try this one. We're going to come down this way. We're going to point over this way, and back this way, and down this way, and point this way, and back this way, and then down this way. Okay, so let's bold it now. Okay. And so I'm just using simple markings here, just so we can develop something that is visually interesting to look at but is also a learning tool so that when we are done with this you have a good idea of how to mix your colors up. Okay now lastly so we've got you know our two quadrants down here already straightened out so let's uh, let's go like this let's go line and then we're going to go shark fin but it's going to be laying on its side. So sometimes, see, when we make this painting, there won't be any top or bottom to it when it's finally done. Okay, and then we're going to go up again, and we're going to have another shark fin, but it's going to come down in this direction. Okay, so you got to kind of do your best to get these shapes, not precisely like this, but we have all got to be able to communicate when, I was, when I'm pointing to a particular shape, you really need to be able to find that shape on your piece of artwork so that we can uh, all fill this in according to a lesson that we're doing so we get uniform paintings you know, from not necessarily everybody's is going to look alike, but when we're doing a group lesson, it's important that we are able to communicate with each other. Okay, in this case, I got a little smudge up there that I am not going to be able to live with, so I'm going to take care of that right now. Okay, so we've got our four quadrants. We've also got four shapes, and these four shapes uh, are here, 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 and here, right? So we've got four shapes. Now we've got to break down each of these into ten other shapes in the middle of all of this. And so we're going to just use simplistic shapes and we'll go here and here and here and here. Okay. And so I'm going to say let's start out with something like, um, let's just start out with something like this. We're going to put a curve in this corner. And it, you're, on your piece of artwork it needs to take up just about the same amount of space as you can see right here on the reference painting okay so there we're going to put a curve in the side there uh, you don't have to bold this with a marker I'm merely doing this so that you can see what I'm doing in here okay so that's a I'm going to number them you do not need to number them but this is shape number one and this would be shape number two all of this in the background now uh, sometimes this can go very quickly. Other times I need to slow the pace of the instruction down so we all can uh, keep up. Let's on this one over here, we're going to make three, sat, uh, three smiley faces. We're going to go smiley face, smiley face, smiley face. Now if you can make it on your project, hit this one shark fin, you know, the line in between it, then that's great. And if you can't, it doesn't really matter where it touches this line at. 
so long as you tuck the shape up into the upper right hand corner of that quadrant. So this will be shape number three now. And we need ten shapes in all of this. So uh, let's draw some simple shapes. If we start with a upside down V shape, it needs to be big enough so that you can paint inside of it. So all of these uh, images that I'm drawing on here, these shapes, should take up about the same amount of space inside of your uh, drawing here. So we're going to make a, a upside down V shape. I'm going to go ahead and bold that. Same thing on the other side so everybody can see what is going on here. Okay, so it's an upside down V. All we've got to do is really go straight down the middle with this. Until if you can make it touch that lobe, then that's fantastic. If you can't make that happen, don't worry about it. It should just hit somewhere on this line down here. So we've got what looks like an arrow pointing upwards, correct? All right, now I'm going to simply connect these portions together. Like this, same thing in this direction over here. So it looks like I have a pyramid just kind of balancing on the end of that lobe right there. So I'm going to go ahead and hold that. And then I'm going to do the same over here. Okay, so let's count up our shapes then. If we had one, all of this negative space is two, this is three, this shape here would be shape four and this would be shape 5. Now you don't have to number it, I simply have to keep track of these things in order to be able to see what is happening on our drawing. Okay, so we're still working in this area up here in the upper left quadrant. So we've got five shapes and we made pretty good time doing it. Here's what we're going to do next. We're going to come about halfway down this block, okay, this quadrant, and we're going to just wave a line along, lazy S's, just kind of passes in one side, kind of passes out the other side, so it's just a mildly waving line, okay? And we're going to then, I'm going to bold it, you don't necessarily need to do this, but you must be able to find the shapes when I'm referencing them. If I were to say to you, we're going to paint this shape in some color, you need to be able to find that shape on your painting. Okay, so we've got five. Uh, so we got one here, all of this is two, this is three, four, and five. This shape down here will be six, and this shape over here will be seven. So you can see how it make it it gets taken up very quickly. Okay, so here we're going to maybe go from up here, and I'm going to have like a, a beam of light coming out of the sun. That's what I'm trying to do here. So this light will come from about right here will touch the top of our pyramid <coughs> and continue on and if you are drawing it the same way I am drawing it, it will hit over here somewhere. All that's really important to me is that it hits the top of the pyramid and that somewhere over here it hits this shark fin. It doesn't have to be, even be on the shark fin as long as it hits this line somewhere in here, okay? So that is going to make a big difference in the um, number of shapes we've got. Okay, so in this case now, we stopped at seven, so one, two, three, four, and five, six, and seven. This shape would be eight. This shape will be nine up here. And so all we have to do is find uh, a place to split one more shape up. And <clears throat> what I'm saying we'll do with that is that we will go from uh, the corner of the pyramid, or the side of this pyramid, hmm, Hmm, that's a good question. Yeah, that's a good question. Yeah, we'll do that. So we're just going to draw a curved, slightly wavy line that just comes right off the edge of the paper right there. And that should be ten. Let's see. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and this shape would be shape number ten. So, that's pretty good. Uh, we have been able to uh, pull this part together rather rapidly. Now it does uh, not always go so quickly. I always try to make the first quadrant rather simple. So we'll, you know, kick up the complexity 
in the next quadrant here. So we'll move over to this quadrant here next. And of course we're going to need 10 shapes uh, in that quadrant as well. And you know, if we base it on simple shapes, it's a lot easier. If we base it on super complex shapes, things get really crazy. So we are going to keep it simple. And I think what we'll do is we'll start with, in the middle, we have a uh, like an angular shape here. So we'll start with uh, something that's less angular over here. What would be a good, okay, like a heart, for instance, would be a good kind of biomorphic shape. So in the middle of this, we're going to sketch in a heart that takes up, you know, a good amount of space in here because we have to be able to we have to be able to paint inside of this heart and so it sometimes has to be larger than you would think so in this case you know you gotta kinda try to make it look symmetrical meaning the same on both sides so we're back to design unit again and symmetry is important in people's perception of beauty of art uh, and the things that they see every day around them so I have to fix this up a bit uh, so it, it looks symmetrical, or at least close to it. That's kind of close. Seems like there's a problem right here. But that's pretty close. I've got this kind of really kind of, that's what it is. That's why it didn't look right. So I'm going to fix this up. And dust it quickly and then I think I'm going to go ahead and bold the lines because I think that is pretty close to being what I want and like I was saying it doesn't have to be perfect it just has to be pretty good so you should draw a heart that takes up about the same amount of space on your piece of artwork as you see being taken up here and so you can see how that's a rather large heart in this case Okay, that'll work. That one line's kind of bending me there. Okay, this needs to be fixed up. Okay, so we've got a heart. That will be shape number one. Okay, so we're working in this quadrant. So we call this shape number one. In fact, what we could do, let's do it this way. We can make that into two shapes right away, can't we? So starting at the top, the cleave, I'm going to go zig, zag, zig, zag, zig. And then we've got this is shape number one, this is shape number two, all right, one, two, and all of this in the background is shape number three now. Okay, so with that we can start breaking down uh, the background again and start making some interesting shapes out of these things. So much like we did over here, we just used random kinds of shapes to make things work. Let's try this in this case. Uh, I'm going to use my pencil first. I'm going to take this heart and we're going to tilt it at an angle. From this lobe, I'm going to draw a tilted line. And that tilted line will touch the top of the picture. And then, I'm going to hold that line. Okay. Now I'm going to do similar about right here. See where these two parts, the lobes of the heart come together. We're just going to take a line and we're going to tilt it like this. Okay, I'm going to bold that line. Now we're getting some shapes starting to develop even though they are simple shapes. So if this is shape number three, one, two, and three, this would be shape number four. Okay, now in continuing this idea, we're going to have a, a line that would be coming from, it would be visible about right here, so it comes out of this lobe of the heart, and it's going to go almost into the corner, but off of the paper. So it looks like our heart is flying through the air, kind of. Okay, so let's go ahead and hold that up. We've got our flying heart, and that would be our shape number five. Now, you don't have to number them. I'm keeping track of them, but it's not a bad idea to lightly number them if you so desire so that you can uh, really uh, 
you can identify the right shapes when we're uh, counting them out to make sure we have 40 of them. Okay, <coughs> this is, uh, let's go from down here. Uh, in fact, let's just take the bottom of the heart and we'll just draw a, la a lazy S where it hits the bottom of the picture. So lazy. And that is going to give us another shape. So one, two, three, four, five. All of this over here now will be six. And we can uh, do some interesting stuff. I like this cloud shape. And so if we've got happy faces up there, maybe we should think about some uh, sad face shapes down in here. So we're going to try to <coughs> excuse me, fill up this entire area kind of. So we're going to go one, two. Three, four sad faces until we get down to the middle of this lazy S. Now it doesn't matter really where these four sad faces hit this line at, just that they hit this line somewhere. So if I were to say, hey, can you find shape number four, you should be able to find shape number four on your drawing right now. If I were to say, hey, let's, uh, if you would have this, you know, can you do shape number six in the upper left quadrant, you should be able to find that. Okay, if I were saying, uh, let's uh, fill in shape number three next. That would be the one up there. So as long as we can find all the same markings and the same shapes, we're going to be fine. So in this case, we've got one, two, three, four, five, six. This, all this up here, this shape would be number seven. Then. So we'll just continue to break these shapes down. Let's do the same thing with four uh, sad faces over here. So we'll just start here this time. We'll go sad face, sad face two, sad face three, sad face four. And we've just developed another shape. So in this case, this shape is already there, but the space in between them is not. So that would be shape number eight in this case. And so sometimes we can <coughs> keep it really, really simple. Uh, we can take, for instance, uh, this shape right here where the sharp fin is at and we can go zig, zag, zig, zag so it touches the side of the heart and that makes it now this right here is going to be shape number nine so you should be able to find all these shapes particularly some of the strange ones so if I said you know we're going to be painting in shape number eight you know next to the heart you should have something and should be able to find that shape somewhere in there all right, so now that we've got nine shapes, it looks like we probably need to divide up uh, either the most complicated shape or the largest one that's left over. And uh, that's kind of hard to determine sometimes uh, in these kinds of shapes. However, it looks to me like probably if we were to uh, go up here to shape number five, okay, and you don't have to keep track of them like this, but I am, we're just going to cut this, we're going to make this into a curve about halfway, halfway to the corner. Okay. And that kind of makes it look like a heart shaped box, kind of. Uh, it makes it look more three dimensional that way. That's what we're attempting to do here. And so that would be shape then up in the corner is shape number 10. So we're making pretty good progress. Almost always in the physical classroom, it takes an entire class period and then part of the next class period to do this. Okay, well, let's uh, move on. Uh, if I'm going too fast for you, you simply should pause the video and uh, catch up with where I'm at. And so if we've got an angular shape here and a curvy shape over here, then I'm saying we should go with another curvy and then angular down here again. So in this case, let's do a, and we're just doing simple shapes, you might notice. I'm going to start with an ellipse, or an oval shape, as I call it, uh, as most kids call it. Okay, so we've got like a mashed oval there. And we can project some lines from this. We can go straight down like this. And this should be rather large. It takes up as much space as you see in your piece of artwork as you can see 
that it takes up in my piece of artwork here for the reference painting, the demonstration piece. Okay, now all we got to do there, and I'll bold it straight down, and we do the same over here. So for those of you who know your geometry, your geometric solids are already probably figuring out that what we're drawing is a cylinder. So we'll put a happy face there. Because drawing cylinders makes people happy. Okay, so a cylinder so far. But what can we do with it? Now you I'm gonna draw you don't have to draw this stuff in there, but it doesn't count as a shape. So I'm gonna put in just an indication that there might be something in my cylinder, but because it's so small, it won't actually count as a shape. And then, also, I always like to, because I'm a, a big coffee drinker myself, I like to put a handle on here, and then another circle inside that. And then I'm going to bold those lines. Alright. And that gives us, and we'll, all of these little minor shapes might, won't be counting as a shape, but we'll count this as shape number one. Uh, now, let's see, it probably should be sitting somewhere, I would say, on kind of like a tabletop or something. So we're going to come about halfway down here. We're going to draw a curved line that touches the uh, somewhere on the handle and then emerges from over here and curves downward. So it looks like it's kind of sitting on a tabletop, maybe. And all of that shape then would be shape number two. And all of this up here would be shape number three. <coughs> so you can see it can come together rather quickly once we start uh, drawing uh, just random shapes. So, if we've only got three shapes, of course, we have to have ten before we can move on to the next quadrant. And since this is coffee, I think it should be having some uh, steam coming out of it. So, I'm going to go right in the middle of the cup, and I'm going to draw wavy lines, like steam. Now, it, if it comes up into this lobe there, that's fantastic. If it doesn't, don't worry about it. It only has to hit this line here, somewhere, in order to do this. So I'm going to bold that line again. So I like this uh, technique of uh, drawing it with a pencil and then bolding it with a marker so that you can clearly see what I'm trying to do here on the video screen. And I, I can tell by monitoring the camera right now that it's showing up pretty well. Okay, we're going to do that twice more. We're going to go almost to the end of the cup, not quite to the end of the cup, and we're going to try to mimic this line this lazy S. And it needs to be a broad stripe. And this time it will hit the center line more to the right. And so you're trying to match this, uh, the wave in that line. So in this case we can bold this up and I think I'm going to do one more of those and then we got to count up our shapes. So if we went almost to the edge of the cup here, we'll go almost to the edge of the cup here. And we're going to try to duplicate this this marking, this S shape, or this curved line, and where it comes and moves back and forth, it should, they should match each other, given that that sense of motion that we're uh, talking about all the time in creating drawings. Alright, let's fold that, and then we're going to have to do a bit of a countdown here and see how much, how many shapes we've got. So in this case, we've got one, and then all this is two, and three, <coughs> this would be, this shape is four, this shape is five, and this whole shape over here is all, is six. So you can see it fills in rather quickly as we're uh, drawing it in. So let's move on here. So if we've got, uh, we maybe need to divide our table up a bit here. And let's try something like this. Uh, let's assume that like the sun here is maybe coming in a window and casting a shadow off of our coffee mug. So we're going to draw a line from this portion of the coffee mug and it's going to hit the center of the bottom of the drawing. So when we've done that we have just now created a, yet another shape. 
So when we divide one shape, many times we create more than two shapes sometimes. So this is shape number seven. And I think we should continue that idea with the shadow effect. So I'm going to describe that in. And then I'm going to use the marker here. And then the shadow, see, is shape number eight. Okay, so space gets used up quickly sometimes in this. Um, then what can we do here for this? We have to split two more shapes and so I'm thinking let's try to keep it kind of simple here. So from the lobe that we've got right here let's just draw a line that goes down but before it hits the table it goes off this way and then comes back down this way right here. So it's down, over to the right, and down again. And that should give us shape number nine. Okay, so if this one was eight, this open space then must be nine. And I think that in to, so we get some symmetry, let's try that same thing over here. And we've got this little stair step thing working, so it probably would make visual sense. So if we come off of this portion, the stair step straight down, straight this way, and then down again. Then I think that will give us our ten shapes, and we may have to count them up in order to see. Okay, but I think that's 10. So look, we go 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, and this is in fact 10. Alright, so progress is being made here rather quickly too, I might add. We're down to the last quadrant to set it up. Now, uh, we'll probably run out of time here and we'll have to pick this up in the next session. But then once we get that drawing done and we clean it up a little bit, we can actually start painting in the very next session. So you'll need your painting gear. Now if this is, uh, let's say, we've got like curved, curved, angular. So I say we go with something uh, angular again. And, this, and in this case, I think what we need to do is probably, let's go with just a big diamond shape right here in the middle of all of this. So it needs to take up a, a rather large amount of space. We have to be able to paint inside of these shapes that we're making. So if you make these tiny little shapes, you will find that you struggle with it. And then you will also struggle with trying to get the um, paint to accurately paint in very small, minute spaces. So it's pretty important that you draw these images rather large. Now, if you're uh, familiar with this, this right here is the shape of the uh, letter F in our flag language, if you recall that. So this will be shape number one. And in this case, we're going to try to add some movement to it. So uh, we're going to kind of project it three-dimensionally. We're going to take from here, and we're going to, uh, let's see, draw a, a tilted line. And that tilted line should hit somewhere, a diagonal line, somewhere in that middle of the this center line right here. It doesn't matter where it hits, just that it hits there. And so once I get this bolded, move on. So we've got shape number one, and all of this in the background, of course, is shape number two. All the negative space in the part in our design unit on form. Okay, we're going to do the same thing from this corner. We're going to try to make it parallel to that line, tilt it just slightly until it disappears behind the center line there. With the oh, there's the that's the end of our session, ladies and gentlemen. So we got to get a few more things done here, and then in the next session, you should be ready to finish this drawing, and we can begin some painting on it.
Ooh, I just moved the whole board, and that's not good. Okay, let's see how that played on the camera there. It didn't seem to make too big a difference. Um, <clears throat> let's go ahead and do the exact same thing again. Tilted line. We want this one tilted at the same angle if we can. So it looks like a like a a block of wood coming out the uh, of the side of the picture there. And so we're going to go ahead and hold that as well until it runs off the bottom of the picture there or hits the center line. Okay, so if this is shape one and this is shape two and this is shape three, all of this around the surrounding area would be shape number four. And let's see here. Maybe we can do one more quick uh, divide. Uh, for instance, if this has that curve up there, uh, maybe we can go with a curve down here in the lower portion. So let's just draw a curved line. That will end up right there. And that will give us shape number five in all of this. So what we're going to do is we're going to uh, stop for the day. And then when we return tomorrow or in the next session, uh, we'll complete the drawing and we will start painting. And so recall this, you are going to need you know, a uh, some red, yellow, blue, black, and white paint, some sort of a paintbrush. Uh, probably your paint should be something you can clean up with soap and water. And then uh, some paper towels and some rinse water. All right, that's what we've got. That's where we're going to be painting at. This is what you're going to need to do it. And I'm just going to leave that right there for now. So uh, have a nice day, and I will see you in the next session. Good day.